today we'll talk about uh, neural networks. Uh, so um, it's an interesting area of machine learning. It's simultaneously one of the oldest and one of the newest areas. So um, the work on machine learning goes back to the 1940s when people tried to um, started trying to build models uh, of the uh, of the brain, um, and um, and uh, they um, if. Um, when we talked about logistic regression, you may remember we talked about the perceptron, uh, which is a very simple precursor of, uh, of, 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 of linear models uh, in general. So the perceptron um, goes back to the 50s, uh, and it was invented, and for a while there was quite a lot of hype uh, around it. Uh, so people, uh, people showed uh, amazing performance of the perceptron on a number of uh, on a number of problems, um, and later on it turned out that the the that the problems that they were throwing at it were um, were all flawed in some ways, and then the perceptron, of course, is very limited in what it can do. It cannot do simple things like the like the XOR problem, for example. Um, so, uh, so after that, uh, the, the, there were two people who published a very influential paper, and after that, the research in neural networks basically died, uh, because they said, well, look, they, there was so much hype around it, but they can't even solve simple logical puzzles. So what use is that? Um, um, they were reborn in the 1980s when people figured out how to put multiple perceptrons together into a network and how to learn uh, weights. So there were two big developments there. Uh, Backpropagation was developed, and we'll talk about it uh, in our lecture today, uh, and, um, and uh, symmetric networks, uh, Hopfield nets and Cajonan nets, were developed around the same time. And again, there was a great deal of excitement because uh, these models finally seemed to be able to solve all kinds of learning problems. Um, and then it turned out that uh, there were, so uh, yes, they could solve them, but uh, they could only solve them uh, if, if, uh, if the network was designed by one or two people in the entire world. So there were, two, uh, there were two experts who could basically build these things and teach them to do various stuff, and nobody else could manage to do it. Uh, and it was strange, and when stuff like that happens, you start believing that um, you know, it's, it's not really an algorithm, it's, it's the person behind uh, pulling some strange, uh, turning some strange knobs, and that's, that's where the magic is. And around the same time, uh, more powerful linear classifiers came along, support vector machines and the like. Um, so uh, neural networks, again, fell out of fashion and died. Um, and uh, they were reborn for the second time about two years back when people finally figured out how to train them reasonably quickly on a massive scale. And a big part of that is due to, to the hardware changes uh, that's happened uh, since the 80s. So now you have um, on, your, uh, on your desktop machine, you, uh, you can have a GPU with a, with a thousand cores. And that allows you to train things that you couldn't possibly train um, in the 1980s. So that's really one big uh, reason for the resurgence of neural networks. Uh, they're doing quite well. It's a very active uh, area of research and some of the best performing um, systems um, in the last couple of years have been, have been neural net based systems. 